everyone, this is Adriana Benson from Youth 101. And this is the first time I do a Youth 101 video doing it live. And I want to start off this video, which is going to be on the habit series. My video is going to be about tardiness. I want to start off with mentioning the Freedom Conference, which is going to be next month, which is only a few days away. Let me just get a little bit closer so you can see the poster just a little bit better. We're going to bring in speakers, one from Houston, another from Austin. They're going to be speaking on the topic of freedom. We're really excited because um, they've been preparing for this message for quite a while. And we're everyone's really excited. All the different ministries, all the way from the evangelism team, all the way to the prayer team, as well as the Youth 101 team. We're really excited because this conference is the time where we can all just come together in different parts of ministries and serve God in a way to bring youth and other people closer to God, whether it be for the first time or just continuing and walking in the faith. This conference is going to be at the Bread of Life Church. Um, excuse me, it's actually... The Bridge Church, it used to be the Bread of Life Church. It's in Conway and Mission. You can actually find the location on Google Maps. We've made sure that all the pictures are recent, so you can see that immediately. Um, you can actually check that out right now on Google Maps. And it's going to be from 7 o'clock to 9 p.m. Anyone of all ages, I mean, everyone from all ages are welcome to attend. Um, but... Um, in case you can't make it, we are going to be posting it live, which means you can see it from the comfort of your home in your pajamas, <laughs> watching it, or you can watch just a different day as well, because it's going to be on our Facebook. On this very account, Jared Carrillo, we are actually under progress of making a Facebook page for the Youth 101, as well as the different ministries, that way you can follow them a lot easier, and you can know from which ministry you're seeing. So that's something, a project we've all been working on, but now on to the actual video. Oh, in case you've also been following me on the other videos, I have my blog book again, so I'm really happy. So like, I have everything a lot more organized. Everything's so much easier for me to organize, isn't it? I wanted to, the reason I chose this, this topic was because Within this past month, I've been really late sometimes. Sometimes I tell my, my classmates when we're going to go study, hey, I'll be there at 10. And they ask me, well, are you going to be there at your time or are you going to be there real time? And it made me realize that my priorities or I wasn't treating things with the importance they deserved. Um, for example, I just made me decide you know what, I still have a lot of time, let me just wash clothes or do some other little chore. But I was fooling myself because I wasn't being honest with myself how long that chore is going to last. Even though I was fully aware how long the chore usually takes me. And I would end up being late. And that would end up leaving me out of the loop. Sometimes it would be difficult for me to catch up. In the end, it all boils down to when you want to be make sure that you're on time is what's more important to you do you want to make it in time to whatever you're going to or do you have something more pressing that you need to attend to and make time for it because if you don't make time for something there's never going to be time for it we only have 24 hours in a day and those hours you can't push you can't make more you can't make it shorter time is time and we need to make the best of it. Um, I sometimes um, I sometimes write a little bit of poetry here and there, and I want to share this this piece I wrote recently. Fleeting moments are like leaves falling in the wind. You may rush to catch it, but will nonetheless remain a leaf, whether it be on the ground or in your hand. Um, I know that, especially in this day and age, that everything's like, hurry, 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 because everything's important, everything's urgent, you need to attend to this, do this, do that, that 
we sometimes just lose sight of what we're supposed to do. And at that point, it becomes very difficult to focus on one task at a time and excel at it. We're biting off more than what we can chew. And while we're trying to wolf down what we're chewing, we're already eyeing what we're going to eat next at a buffet. And that's no way to live and that's not healthy. The way you want to live is taking one thing at a time, slowly and ever so wonderfully. I wanted to mention this scripture from the Bible. Se uh, 2 Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this. If anyone does not work, neither shall he eat. It basically means if you don't put in the effort, you're not going to receive the rewards. If you don't study, unless you're a savant or extremely gifted and with knowing the subject already, you're not going to pass an exam. If you don't put gas in your car, your car is going to break down and you're not going to be able to go anywhere. Likewise, if you do not... If you don't put in the effort to organize yourself, things aren't going to fall into place all the time. Things will take more time than they need to. And if you don't have that leeway, even if you're maybe the best micromanager, it's not going to work. You need to leave room for error because we do live in a faulty world. We live in an imperfect world and we ourselves are imperfect, but we can aim to be better through our, our perfect God by making sure that we follow what He wants us to do. And I know that sounds extremely abstract as if, well, how does that translate into any helpful advice you draw? Well, you, what you can do is realize when you're being too idle. You don't want to just be like what I did um, earlier this month. I would, let me just bring out some props to make it a lot easier to understand. Um, this is an old textbook I used to have, and this is a new little game one of my friends gave me. Um, the way I would reward myself for studying was by maybe, you know, taking a little break, listening to music, or running outside with my dog. But there came a point where I was, like, doing so much of work and studying that I just felt that, oh, goodness, everything feels so meaningless. I would look at my piano, and it's just like, one day, one of these days, I'll get back to you. I'll, I'll get back to you. Or I'd look at my, at my coloring pads, and i say, almost there, almost there. And then I just became so frustrated and I said, forget this. I'm not going to deal with this frustration. I'm just going to try to make my life meaningful. Well, it was a step in the right direction, but I was going at full speed. So I ended up just dropping this and just having fun, 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 fun. And that was not a very good thing because in the end, I did have to end up dropping very fun things completely and then having to make up everything I, w I had not been doing. So in the end, I made myself more unbalanced and it made me much more unhappy. But if you're at that point, just get through it. Just take a breath and just get through it. What you want to do is you want to balance them both, you know? A little bit of this, a little bit of that. This becomes first, and then this becomes that. Because if you do too much or the other, it's going to break. Let me just put this heavy book down. It's heavy. Um, and it just... Any, anything that you lose your time on. Um, sometimes you would I would oversleep, and a lot of my classmates... A lot of my friends actually also have that problem that we're always so busy trying to keep up with school and everything that we just end up crashing and having to sleep 
for a whole day in order to make up everything that we did. It's not very healthy. And um, I don't recommend it to you. We don't have to do it. But understand that there is too much in excess is a poison. And let me share another verse from the Bible. Actually make it two. Proverbs 6, 10 to 11. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little holding of the hands to sleep. So shall your poverty come to you like a prowler, and your need like an armed man. It basically means that if you're not going to put in the if you're just going to just wait around, wait, a, wait around, you're not going to be attending to all of your duties that actually help maintain you and actually sustain you because work is work and um, the way that someone mentioned me it mentioned to me it was mountains don't buy groceries it's like the scenery and and everything else that you like to do hobbies maybe you can actually make money out of it maybe but work is work and the way that you need to get through life is by working and also by knowing that the Lord will provide because if you do work 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 it's not gonna help you either you need to work put in your effort that way you're able to know that it's not just in order to get ahead in this life or have a living it's in order to know that you need to invest like in your relationship with God you need to invest time. You need to be devoted and have dedication in order to reap any fruits from it. And I want to leave you with three pieces of advice. The first one is to pace yourself. If you're trying to go either at seven gears forward, which basically means at full speed, you may do well, but you may burn out. And it is once you reach the burnout point that the cost is going to outweigh all the benefit. At that point, you won't be very efficient anymore. Maybe you can do short sprints. Yes, um, many great athletes do that. But sprinting all the time will cause you to maybe <sighs> finally tire out and just lie on the side of the of the road until everyone else just passes you and there's no point in that maybe conditioning yourself like okay here I'll work a little faster and then here I'll slow down doing that pace will keep you at a steady movement and give you progress and remember slow progress is progress so pace yourself or else you may find yourself in a very undesirable place second of all Break it down. Spread things apart, otherwise you're going to spread yourself too thin. And by breaking it down, I don't mean multitasking. I mean, break it down into much easier chunks. That way, what you actually are trying to chew and bite off are actually easier to swallow down. And if it's easier to swallow down, well, it's easier to finally finish with that piece and move on to the next. And third, third, actually this is the third in sign language, this means a W, third, be honest with yourself. If you know that it's too much for you to handle, maybe that you're thinking of taking, oh, let me take one more class or sign up for your mini master, don't overestimate yourself because it's just as dangerous as underestimating yourself. Maybe you want to get ahead, but if you underestimate yourself, you may not be bold, but if you overestimate yourself, you risk putting everything else at risk. Maybe you're taking five classes, and by taking the sixth class, you make everything else suffer. Because in the Bible it says, you cannot serve two masters, you can only serve one. You will either love or hate the other. Likewise, you need to be honest with yourself, and it's a, it's a struggle sometimes. Um, when I'm running to school, I'm like, well, I can stop by and pick up something to eat. It's like, no, no, it's it's too late. I know it's going to take at least 15 minutes to get to stop and get some food. So 
I'll just run and buy, buy something at school instead. So, I mean, it's not what I want, but I, I'm being honest with myself and I'm not being late to school and it's helping me. And one last Bible verse I wanted to mention because I know there's one viewer. Yes, I can see you. I can actually see when I'm, when I'm live streaming that there's actually a viewer. Hi, <laughs> thank you for watching at 3.46 in the morning that um um this last bible verse ephesians six fourteen, stand therefore having girdled your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness stand just stand um you can see in my outfit i really hope you can see is that i'm wearing a belt um the reason i'm wearing a belt is because this what I'm wearing is actually would be very loose on me um, it would be super loose that I wouldn't be able to move around very efficiently or may trip or might snag on something likewise with our spiritual clothing with what we cover ourselves with if we don't have it in a way that's able to allow us to move efficiently and effectively without stumbling or tripping on ourselves is the the way that we would keep ourselves together is by being honest because when we're not being honest we're leaving it mm, maybe you know it's like some gray area but when we're defining and we're holding ourselves onto the truth we're being kind of held on with a safety belt of the safety harness that keeps us from falling too deep and you know if there's one one piece of advice that I would like for you to take today from this video about tardiness is be honest. And, uh, well, good night or early good morning. Bye!